stories that made the headlines recently. I am Jacinta Agochuku. This week, President Bola Tinubu visits United Arab Emirates raises hopes on lifting the visa ban. Also this week, Chicago State University confirms President Tinubu attended the institution, graduated in 1979. And later on the show, President Tinubu nominates Cardoso as CBN governor, names four deputies. All the details in a moment. Stay with us. Well, thank you for staying with us. We begin with the, uh, the end of the visa ban on Nigerians traveling to United Arab Emirates. President Bola Tunubu and the uh, President of the United Arab Emirates, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahan in Abu Dhabi, finalized in the studio with me. And as well, I have Ni Saliu, a political analyst via Zoom. Welcome, it's Mr. Justice. It's my pleasure, as always. Mr. Nee, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening, thank you for having me. All right, let me begin with you, Mr. Justice. You know, expectations rashly run high as Nigerians. We are eagerly expecting uh, the resumption of flight between these countries. But how do you react to this recent uh, report that is kind of contradicting the whole uh, excitement, you know, that there's no changes thus far based on the ban, visa ban lifting? Okay, for me, I think it is of little moment. Or I would have said it's of no moment. The fact that there was a ban in place and uh, leadership at the highest levels are now meeting to say, to, to, to see how to avert it and to expand the robustness of the economic cooperation, bilateral cooperation between Nigeria and the UAE is very, very commendable at the highest level. Even if it is done at the highest level, I expect because of uh, because I know that uh, the eyes and the T's will be dotted and crossed respectively. The foot soldiers, the ministers will now have to meet and uh, reconcile what needs to be done. The the banking uh, sector, for example, the CBN too, will now have to say, okay, all the monies that belong to Etihad or the other airlines that uh, is it the right time for us to release it so that they will be able to continue to do business. Because if all those are done, and I think that those are the ones that are left to be done, if all those are done, ultimately everything that has been decided at the highest level by the two presidents will be implemented. And for me, I think that the earliest that all those are done, the better for the economy of both countries. We know that the economics, people are, who are in the travel space, who are in travel agency business, they are really, really taking a hit. Tourism, too, has taken a hit, must have taken a substantial hit in the UAE because it's a lot of Nigerians. Nigerians are one of the uh, countries that most populate uh, their tourist industry. And of course, we should also take the opportunity to talk to Nigerians to conduct themselves better when they go to such countries because sometimes, it is, the, uh, it is the fact that they dabble into criminality high and above how other citizens of other countries dabble in criminality, maybe in Dubai, that will also be a contributory factor in such a ban. So you believe there is still need for agreement to be reached? For yes, at the, at the lower levels. The presidents have spoken, then the ministers, the heads of various agencies, the businesses, the CBN governor to release, release uh, necessary funds mm. that they are owing, not just the, the Dubai airlines, but other airlines so that they will also be okay. uh, uh, encouraged to continue business and also drop fares. For Nigerians. I hope Nigerians understand that. Let me move on to Lee. Lee, let's talk about the concept of the historic agreement that suggests a need for mutual benefit and commitment from both countries. What measures do you believe Nigeria should take to ensure the lifting of the ban becomes a reality? Well, natural has a lot. You know, uh, banning or uh, suspending our visas didn't just take place in one day. There were issues, you know, retain the relationship that we have built over time. We also need to consider people who have businesses in Dubai, whose livelihood depend on 
issuance of ticket and, and uh, I believe that aside the uh, visa ban lifting, there's other things to you know look out for. Nigeria should be looking out for the interest, mutual interest, and as well investment. But let's take a short break, and the uh, news week continues in a moment. Is Newsweek where we highlight some of the biggest stories that made the headlines recently. Now, uh, the Chicago State University has finally confirmed that President Bola Tinubu attended the university and graduated in 1979 with a bachelor's degree. It, however, pointed out that the United States federal law prevents it uh, from providing any further information about Tinubu's record without consent or unless allowed to do so via court order. The certificate was issued in 1979 and signed by University President uh, Nora Daniel. But Daniel didn't arrive at CSU until 1998 and left about 10 years later. Submitting false record to the National Election Commission before the votes should nullify the election article had claims. Uh, as you have Justice and Ni Saliu with me, you know, this issue has been a long-standing controversy. Now, do you think the confirmation by the state, um, the Chicago State University, would, you know, somehow put a rest to this finally? I pray so. Hmm. I pray so because it's looking like <laughs> it's almost eternal in the way and in the way we're approaching it. And, yeah, I know it's pivotal because it's a constitutional requirement that... Uh, at least some academic levels should be achieved. And since uh, the mass school rate now has now been unveiled, the school which has the capacity to actually say this person actually attended our institution has come out in the open, in court, to say, to do the barest, the maximum that is allowed without the need for consent, which is to say, okay, this person attended our institution. We must be reminded, when people raise this issue of, okay, they want to go beyond that, they want to go further, I usually tell them, I'm quick to t remind them, mm. that in the United States of America, Donald Trump sent his own henchman, Michael Cohen at the time, even though they are estranged now, to Watson School of Business and to other schools, other schools that Donald Trump attended. And we warned them <laughs> seriously that you dare not release my academic records because legally it is my own private uh, issue and it is for me to give consent to before, before you, you declare sin. Mm -hmm. In fact, it mustn't leak because if it leaks, I will sue you seriously in negligence. So if that can happen with the president of the United States in the U.S., and we are still talking about the same set of laws. The president you know, who attended a U.S. school. And that's still, that law is still in place. If he serves a Donald Trump or any other person, he should also be able to benefit. I don't see how the courts, in fairness, will be able to go beyond this in the U.S. Because there is a law in place, family law, uh, on privacy of of citizens of the U.S. or of anybody that uses uh, their institutions that those laws, it has to be by consent of the person that attended an institution before you can go to release something as uh, detailed as a transcript or whatever score, whether it's magnum cum laude, summa cum laude, or any other cum laude that a person actually achieved mm. in a particular institution in the U.S. All right, Nee, let me get your view on this. You know, despite the opposition's capitalization on this issue, it has been deemed irrelevant by various quarters. Why do you believe uh, they continue to bring this up? Look, um, it's politics, and there's nothing more than that. It is no longer law. Um, people are just playing to the gallery. I don't know what more anybody wants. And there is... There is no further level of desperation other than what has been displayed by, you know, uh, the PDP. Look, what the constitution requires is that you have a certificate. You have graduated from a school. All the schools that uh, the president has quoted have come out and say, look, this man came to our school and I, he graduated. 
In fact, I saw in the news two days ago, someone who graduated with him in the school also confirmed. And the university has provided the court with the normal documentation confirming that Asha Haju Bola Tinubu attended the University of Chicago and graduated. There's nothing more than that. The law does not require anybody to begin to uh, provide transcript or anything. So, and that should end it ordinarily. That should end it. Even in, the, even in Nigeria, even was in the US, what INEC will require is to write the school and they will be able to rely on the school confirmation. And so somebody is suggesting that the school as big as the University of Chicago would want to protect it. Look, that school has graduated millions of students and they have gone, all those have gone ahead to become people in life. They don't have to risk their reputation because of just one person. And I don't think the university is about to do that. So I think the matter should rest. If the other cases the opposition has, other issues, other facts that they have, to bring, they see have, you know, uh, an opportunity to go to the Supreme Court and lay all those, you know, bear before the Supreme Court. But the issue of academic record has been set to the side of concern, and anything beyond what has been done already is just playing to the gallery and wasting everybody's time. Arne, whether you like it or not, Nigerians, you know, this whole controversy have left a lot of perception in the minds of some Nigerians. Now, but do you think this development will have in any way, you know, calm or change the perception of Nigerians as regards uh, to President Tunubu's credibility in any way? Okay, for me, I usually feel that people are in three categories. The extreme right, the extreme left, and the people in the middle who can still be persuaded. Okay, let me put it, let me put it. People who cannot be persuaded on both sides, and people in the middle who can still be persuaded. Mm -hmm. The people in the middle definitely can still be persuaded. And <laughs> for the ones that cannot be persuaded, it doesn't matter if even you bring, <laughs> if even it is uh, depending on which side we which side we face when we worship. If, if even you bring somebody from Jerusalem or or from Christian faith or from the Islamic faith or from traditional faith, and you bring the highest persons to say that okay, this is actually what happened, some people will still not be convinced, and there is nothing you can do about those persons. But if ones that can be persuaded. Why not? And what, what do you suggest the president do, you know, at least to... There is really nothing you can do. Let me even, let me even go a bit further. I, I think, pursuant to reportage, too, we saw some transcripts that really showed that, okay, this person, <laughs> I commented on one of our platforms that, so this, this man is this very, this man is very, is this smart? If, if that indeed was his transcript. Mm. And, of course, a lot of people still... They went against it. So a lot of people, a lot of Nigerians are beyond uh, uh, correction in this regard or beyond persuasion in this regard. And there's absolutely it's nothing. Especially how do. irrelevant the whole matter is. Yeah, it has now been it has now become a totally redundant issue. I agree. All right, let's move to our final story for tonight. It's a new era for Nigerians Apex Bank as President Bola Tunubu has approved the nomination of Dr. Olayemi. Kadoso as the new governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria for a term of five years at the first instance, pending his confirmation by the Senate. The president also approved the nomination of four new deputy governors of the CBN for a term of five years at the first instance, pending their confirmation by the Senate. Before Kadoso's nomination, for, uh, for Lashodun at DBC uh, Shunobi had been in charge of the APS Bank in an acting capacity following his appointment by President Bola Tinubu. As you have Justice and Nia with me. Uh, uh, let me come to you, uh, Justice. Uh, much is known uh, and have been said about Mr. Cardoso uh, and his impressive profile, but in your opinion, what are your expectations in his new role and especially as it affects or regards to our monetary uh, policy? For him to hit the ground running, as fast as possible, and I'm happy that uh, he's is the, the third of the trial that has now been put in place. Uh, with the trial, I mean uh, the finance minister, the current uh, finance minister, and the current FRS chairman that was that was put in, in place this this week, uh, Mr. Zakari Deji. So Mr. Cardoso is now in place. I feel that those trial as as fast as possible, they should hit the ground running to solve our forex problems 
to solve the general structure of our economy, to, to solve the, the, the import, export, the productivity of our economy, the manufacturing sector, so that as much as possible, we, we, we stop our dependence on, on the foreign, uh, foreign exchange market. So if we can put this in place fast, I, I must also say as a rider that I don't expect him to perform miracles mm. in, the, in, his, uh, in his first days in office or in the first months, but there should be strong signals of where he's going, strong directions of where he's going. For, for the first time in a long time, our economy should be going in a particular direction. And I'm very, very happy that the president, too, is in the finance space, the economic space, and he has had opportunities that he didn't squander. So the four of them and the fact that they are bent on making this work, I think that we will have something that will, that will make Nigerians at least laugh. All right, Neyi, let's also delve into the escalated inflation rate. What potential strategies or uh, policies might the new CBN governor implement to address inflation and stabilize the economy? What do you think? Uh, first, I think he has to build confidence. Uh, and... Um, they need to resolve the escalating, you know, uh, foreign exchange crisis. Uh, it's going um, a bit south. And the fact that the caliber of the people that have been saddled with the responsibility is something that should assure Nigerians that there will be some degree of confidence in the economy. Uh, Yemi Cardoso is coming from a robust uh, public and private sector experience. And these people have been tested in Lagos, and they are at the national state to do the same. Uh, before now, we used to have both the fiscal and the monetary policy at parallel levels. Uh, there is going to be certain appreciable harmonization at the federal level now, and that should, should work. And productivity, too, will increase. Uh, it's important that the president now has seen or is working with people that have bought into his policies that have always been part of the campaign, part of the uh, development of the policy. And uh, they have an idea of how to quickly implement it and bring it to bear. Nigeria needs a lot of liquidity, reduce our foreign, uh, our foreign debt, and put us in a position where, you know, we can have uh, appreciable income and be able to reduce our debt, both local and foreign. So that we're in a position to bring down the level of inflation, inflation, and our people can, you know, take the benefit of finally a government that has hit the ground running. Uh, when the president came into power, a lot of things have changed immediately, and you can see that slowly they are beginning to work. Uh, now we have a lot of savings, and there are money, a lot of money being devolved to the state and local government that will improve productivity. It will increase the capacity of you know the average Nigeria to purchase goods, and there are a lot of you know confidence has been built everywhere, and intervention even in their daily life and you know income. So that has helped a lot in in bringing up the capacity of the Nigerians to to purchase and reduce to a degree the impact. Or Randy, I'm, sorry on, on, on I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you in. I'm sorry to. I just want to find out from you. Do you think that there is potential bottleneck at the uh, CBN leadership that the new governor should be careful or aware no, of in solving? No, 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 no. In fact, a lot of those bottlenecks are being removed now. Mm. Don't forget that there is someone currently auditing the CBN and each. Time there's an issue, the issue is promptly resolved. The a lot of investigations are being carried out. The man that has been appointed is capable, uh, and the laws of the land protect the CBN governor and empowers him to be able to take far reaching decisions. And I don't see any bottleneck that he can't deal with immediately. And he has the support of the presidency to rise to the occasion, work in tandem with the Ministry of Finance and other you know, stakeholders in the financial sector. So quickly resolve whatever issues that you know we envisage right now, or that it might come across when he resumes office. All I don't right, see Lee. any bottleneck that he cannot resolve. Right. Yeah, resolve immediately.
All right. Thank you very much. I would have loved to get your own point of view about this bottleneck, but we have to go right now. Thank you, gentlemen. It's my pleasure. I've been speaking with uh, Niyi Saliu and Justice Ojinu, uh, uh, political lawyer and a political analyst. That's uh, Niyi Saliu. Thank you very much for coming, gentlemen. My pleasure. And as well, thank, thank you, you for being... For Thank you for being part of the show. And uh, you know, you can join the conversation on our social media platform at TVC News NG on our website at TVC I am Jacinta Agochuku. Until next week, it's goodbye.